everyone and welcome to the town council meeting today is monday march 21st 2022 uh, the time is 7 p.m and the meeting can also be viewed on youtube prayer councillor santanella god in heaven you are our father and our mother the source of love and wisdom the source of truth and justice. You sent your only son to be your servant. His teachings remind us to do good to one another and to love one another. May we be reminded here tonight, we too are servants and we are here to represent our neighbors and not ourselves. That we have a duty to those who are the most vulnerable, those who have no voice of their own. Grant us the courage and wisdom to do what is right and just. And finally tonight we pray for peace especially for the people of Ukraine and for people around the world who are fighting for freedom. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councillor Santanella. Here. Councillor Ungeyer is absent. Councillor Bosco is absent. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Here. Mayor Crisati. Here. Councillor Despard. Here. Councillor Finger. Here. Councillor Hopkins. Here. Councillor Ludwick. Here. Councillor Mangini. Here. Councillor Pisner. Here. Nine members present and two are absent. Fire evacuation announcement. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the chambers and to my left and to the audience's right. Exit through the doors and go down the stairs and into the parking lots. Minutes of preceding meetings. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes of the special meeting on March 7th, 2022? So moved. Councillor Mangini. Second. Councillor Despard. Any discussions, additions, or deletions? Since none, by show of hands, all in favor? Okay, against, abstentions? Okay. Uh, nine in favor, uh, well, excuse me, eight in favor, one abstention. Okay. It's nine. Oh, one abstention. One abstention, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes, eight, one abstention. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the minutes of the regular meeting on March 7th, 2022? So moved. Councillor Mangini. Second. Uh, Councillor Despard, any discussions, dele uh, additions, or deletions? By show of hands, all in favor? Against? Abstentions? Okay. Eight in favor, one abstention. Okay, good. All right. Uh, special guests, there are none tonight. Uh, public communications and petitions. Any person wishing to speak in front of us, uh, in front of the council, please state your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes the first round and three minutes for each subsequent round. Please refrain from any uh, personalities and we ask that everyone to be respectful of one another. Um, is there anybody who would like to come in front of the council? Good evening. I'm Pam Townsend, 54 Kimberly Drive, Enfield. I am a Wreaths Across America Location Coordinator for Enfield. I am here on behalf of Wreaths Across America Organization, the members of the John Macholik Unit 154 Auxiliary, and myself to thank our amazing community for your support of the mission to remember the fallen, honor those that serve and their families, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. I honestly do not know where to begin. I have been a location coordinator for Enfield and hosting a ceremony at St. Patrick's Cemetery for four years. 2022 is my fifth year. Each year, I reach out to businesses, small and large, individuals, the town of Enfield, for some type of support. I have never been turned away. Matter of fact, I am often asked, how can we do more? 
Thanks to Lori Gates, we were able to have the convoy visit Enfield once again. It was the sixth time they have visited our community. And in 2021, Enfield was the only stop in Connecticut before they headed to Arlington National Cemetery in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. It took some creativity because of the pandemic and a whole lot of support from our schools, the Enfield police, and all our first responders. And by the way, the convoy comes back to Enfield because of the positive reactions from our schools and the townspeople. I thank all of you for your patience and support in bringing the convoy to Enfield. For our ceremony, which was on December 18th, it all began with St. Raymond of Penafort Parish, AKA St. Patrick's Church. They give us permission to host our ceremony at St. Patrick's Cemetery. We had participants and volunteers from each veteran organization, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, Enfield High School, Enfield Hockey Association, Enfield Little League, Home Depot, and Enfield's very own semi-pro football team, the Connecticut River Valley Northmen. And I hope I acknowledged everyone. Each played an important role in the success of our ceremony and honoring our veterans. They definitely lived up to the 2021 theme, live up to their legacy. So Enfield and others, I thank you for your tremendous and continued support to REITs Across America each year. This year, REITs Across America Enfield in Enfield will celebrate 15 years of honoring our veterans. There are approximately 5,000 veterans laid to rest throughout Enfield. St. Patrick's Cemetery has about 1,700 veterans. Our goal has always been to honor all 5,000 veterans. We can do it when you sponsor a wreath. Anyone can sponsor a wreath at any time. And there are several ways, but the easiest is to go to our Facebook page at Enfield CT Reads Across America. There you will find several local groups with their links that support St. Pat's Cemetery, or you may email me at EnfieldWAA at yahoo.com or call me at 860 463 2795. When you sponsor a wreath through a group, the group will receive $5 back from wreaths across America. It's a win-win. The 2020 theme is find a way to serve. If you would like to volunteer, you may contact me at the email that I just provided. The National Wreaths Across America Day and Enfield Ceremony is on December 17th. I will be back in the fall to provide more details about our ceremony. Again, I thank each of you for everything you do to support Wreaths Across America, and I will stay for the counselor's comments later this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Kelly? Kelly Hemmler, 10 Hartford Ave, Thompsonville. There's a proposed text for, um, or regulations for zoning for the recreational marijuana. This is led by Councilor Santanella. In Thompsonville, they are asking for a 100 foot uh, buffer for public buildings, public parks, recreation areas in places of worship. They, ironically, they want a thousand foot uh, of buffer for an existing dispensary. I guess that's more important than our churches and our parks where our kids um, play. And uh, 15, thank goodness, 1500 feet from schools. If this was the whole town, I probably wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't like it because I'm all for a 10 mile buffer, to be honest. But the rest of the town, they're suggesting a thousand foot of existing, well, that's the dispensary, it's the same, sorry. A thousand foot from public buildings, a thousand foot from public parks, a thousand foot from recreational areas and churches, places of worships, 1500 for schools, which is the same. I first got involved because I l grew up in District 1. I moved, bought a house in District 2 uh, in uh, Thompsonville and found that we were treated differently. People treated us differently. There was a bad perception of Thompsonville. I couldn't understand it, surrounded by a lot of good people living there. 
and that's how I got involved. Now, th that's been quite a few years, and it's slowly getting better, and this is gonna put us back to second-class citizen, and it, it's just wrong. Um, I should also mention that in Thompsonville, not everybody has driveways. I mean, fortunately, I have a driveway, but we still use street parking. We still use the municipal lots. One of the other things proposed is to waive the parking. So you wanna bring in a business that's gonna have lines of people buying drugs in front of churches in Thompsonville, in front of your kids playing basketball, and now they're gonna take your parking. It's just wrong. You shouldn't be treat a spot zoning I don't think is right, and I don't think it's right to treat three quarters of the town one way and, a, and our side of town the other way. Now we've come a long way, and yes, we are waiting for a spark that'll set off the economic development for this historical and walkable community. This is not it. And Thompsonville shouldn't be sacrificed to ma and made less important for, for the rest of the town. So I'm hoping that you will all reconsider it. It's, it's not right to treat us this way. And like I said, if you're gonna make it 100 feet buffered here, it should be everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Mark Dion. Um, I'm a property owner down in Thompsonville. I've done a few projects over the years down there. Um, I have about 50 apartments, two businesses. I have mixed use buildings and uh, I have property that has two buildings on one deed. It's just the way it is. Thompsonville's unique. Um, over the years in dealing with the town zoning, building department. Thompsonville was always exceptional. It was always, <laughs> it, would, it always had something unique. Um, <clears throat> renovating exist, existing buildings, which I've done about a dozen, um, always required special attention from the building department, modifications to codes, et cetera. When you go to the building department, they have two sets of codes, one from the government, supplements from Connecticut, dealing with existing buildings. They have books just on existing buildings because they're unique. Thompsonville's um, buildings date back to prior to 1900, and I've worked on them. Um, <clears throat> I'm here because of the tipper barrel situation. Um, sites and premises in Thompsonville are tight. Um, four families currently are getting, are considered non-commercial, and four families and smaller, every unit address is getting a tipper barrel marked with a red tag. Um, so I have four families that are getting four marked tipper barrels. I have a restaurant, Mark's restaurant, with a seven family and I got one. Well, it obviously doesn't make a lot of sense. I was in front of the zoning when I did this in 2009 and the commission said and recognized there was no site for a dumpster. If I had a dumpster, I'd have no problem. Um, <clears throat> I also have properties that have <laughs> two buildings that have seven tenants and I get a tipper barrel. Over on Alden Avenue next to the church, I created a mixed use over there and uh, there's two buildings on the deeds, similar problem. There's no site allowance for a dumpster. So <clears throat> I thought about what the town is trying to accomplish and I actually spoke to other landlords that have the same scenario as I have. And this is, this is what crossed my mind, something to consider. Um, <clears throat> If you have a commercial property, which is the problem? It's the commercial definition. Um, when, I, when, I, when I went to a, the building department, they have codes that say this. 
you have a building that's so big and you're going to work in it, codes that apply, a lot of them lend themselves towards the most, um, <laughs> they, they define the building by its most occupant. In other words, is it residential or is it uh, a business? And they, they define it by square footage. So for example, if you're familiar with the restaurant that I have, it's about a 55, 5,600 square foot building. The restaurant's 1,100 square feet. As a result, it's predominantly a residential building. It's got seven apartments and a small. Now I look at Sylvia's, which is down the street, don't know the exact figures on hers, but she's got five units above her restaurant. For all I know, the square footage of the residential side is greater than the restaurant as well. Um, if I look at the Polish deli on the corner, there's no residential there at all. It's strictly business, okay? We all have the same problem. We, don't, we can't put a dumpster on site. So I thought about it and I said, well, I said, this is how, if I had to agree to something, this is what ran through my mind. I said, if it's predominantly, and this is only for existing structures, new construction, they can make room for a dumpster um, for the most part. Um, if the building is predominantly residential, then my first response is, and it's considered commercial because it's more than four units, my first reaction is give them four tipper barrels because it's the equivalent. I have buildings across the street, like I say, that have four. I said, give them four. So I have a five, six, seven unit. Give them four. Make them pay for another tipper barrel if they want it or need it for the next two units. So if you have a six family, the best you can do is get four from the town, then you gotta pay for the next one. You have an eight family, you have to pay for the, for the, for the additional seventh and eighth unit. Um, <clears throat> I ran that by a couple of the people and they said that makes sense. Um, currently, and I, I'm not saying that you have to give them to them. For example, I have units that, have buildings that have seven apartments and I only need three tipper barrels. A lot of it has to do with the landlord and who and how they allow people to move in. Um, basically, uh, you don't, you don't want to put four and five people in a, two, in a two bedroom if you can avoid it. If you can get one person to take a two bedroom, which I have. Um, and so I like to have, I, I sit back and say, they should have the option of getting more tipper barrels if they need it. The, the restaurant in the seven apartments, four, I'm good. I don't need any more than four. But if I found that I wanted another one, if I had the first four, I should be, I should be paying for the next one. Anyways, that's my comment about tipper barrels. It's a problem. If you can't get rid of garbage, it's like flushing a toilet, you can't live there. It's a health problem. So anyways, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Mark. Is there anybody else that'd like to come in front of the council? Good evening, uh, Matt Kremlitz for Hummingbird Lane. I wanted to address a topic that I feel is due for some conversation at the town level. In my experience and knowledge, the town has two major suppliers of high-speed internet or broadband, Cox and Frontier. I believe the time has come to explore adding fiber optic internet providers to better suit the needs of Enfield now and in the future. These providers would deliver fast, more reliable speeds at a fraction of the cost while saving town residents and businesses millions of dollars per year based on current census data. As we have all seen over the last two years, much of our lives has shifted online due to pressures from the pandemic. Many more people are working from home, learning from home, receiving healthcare virtually, shopping, engaging socially, gaming, streaming, consuming, and producing more and more digital content. This has been a predictable trend over the last two decades that shows no signs of reversing itself. The internet is the single greatest and most vulnerable resource of our generation, and we need to invest in its performance and security as a matter of local and national interest. This sentiment is clearly highlighted by recent federal legis legislation, which appropriate funds for the expansion of access and infrastructure related to broadband internet, such as the American Recovery Act, bipartisan infrastructure bill, and Build Back Better. Governor Lamont's 2023 budget also includes a $100 million revision towards broadband and technology as well. 
and field town residents and businesses are being held back by current network providers who do not offer the bandwidth capacity, performance, or price of a modern network built on today's technology. Adding a fiber provider will drive down monthly costs for residents, install a high performance future proof network into our town, and force current providers to become more competitive in the marketplace. Local area communities such as East Hartford and West Hartford have collaborated recently with providers such as Frontier Communications, GoNet Speed, and SciFi to deploy fiber to home networks to consumers throughout their cities. Given Enfield's current relationship with Frontier, they may be the most logical business partner. Alternatively, Westfield, Massachusetts manages their own network run by the municipality as a service that they've branded Whip City Fiber. I would highly suggest the town investigate proposed federal dollars and capitalize on the spotlight being cast upon broadband and begin the process of collaborating with an organization that can bring Enfield to market speed and price and ensure competitiveness in the future. Regardless of federal monies, Enfield is an attractive community to ISPs due to its high broadband adoption rate and population density. As a point of comparison, I have compiled charts and reading material that contain planned data to help illustrate the gap in our service and price that Enfield is currently forced to bridge daily. In all cases, when compared to local area fiber providers, Enfield residents are paying at a minimum nearly double the going market price for downstream and up to 78 times for upstream bandwidth. I would encourage you to perform your own research to validate these figures. Access to world-class internet, inter internet service is key to staying relevant in education, healthcare, entertainment, and commerce. Without action, Enfield will continue to pay premium prices for antiquated technology and constrained speeds, which prevent the town from realizing its true potential online. I strongly encourage everyone in town to advocate to Frontier, going at speed, and the town council to reiterate that 20th century internet service will no longer cut it in the 21st. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Matt Schmidt, 1304 Bigelow Commons. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, it was revealed that the reason Enfield is still operating under an emergency, besides laughably waiting for other communities to end theirs first, is because essentially there might be some money tied to remaining in a state of emergency. Now, money in politics is usually met with such derision that it is not uncommon for a campaigning politician to feel the need to declare, I am not for sale. But what happens when the entire political structure of a town is for sale, as seems the case here? I previously touched on how the reasoning for the emergency being based in money stands to erode trust in government. For all the town buildings and municipal trucks and sundry equipment, government is not a physical institution. It exists primarily in our minds, and its legitimacy is based solely on the amount of trust a population puts in their form of government. When the political class itself undermines this trust, it stands to destabilize the government more so than any J6 or Antifa demonstration ever could and in fact serves to feed those factions. This is not hyperbole. Look around, people do not trust their institutions. The handling of the pandemic the past two years is just one glaring example. Government with its access to vast amounts of data may have the duty of advising people, of telling them what it thinks they should do. But when should turns to must, when recommendations turn to mandates, that is when government fails because force is the failure of government. It is a failure of any relationship, really, and a relationship between a government and its people has far-reaching implications on the lives of all. So when a government such as Enfield enacts emergency powers, using those powers to apply force to those who it represents, turning shoulds into musts, it rightly opens that government up to doubt. And when that government then refuses to relinquish those powers, that government ends up working against itself and devastates its foundational trust. And trust lost, even more so than freedom, is not easily regained. Now, there are plenty out there credentialed in the management of government and the political sciences who have been educated in operating the levers of government and the workings of policymaking. But when you operate the device in a way it is not meant to be operated, when you overload the machine and force it past its red line, you run the risk, the real risk, of breaking down its engine. And it seems that is where we are. Enfield's engine, held long past its red line, shows damage even as the throttle has been eased off in recent weeks. And sure, it's true, our engine of democracy is imperfect. It misfires plenty, it spits, it sputters, but we know our engine runs and has run well enough for quite some time. But it needs taken care of, not beaten down, maintained and not mistreated. It needs to be operated in the manner in which it was designed. Any other way is abuse, 
and an engine so abused cannot be blamed for the failed actions of its operator. Enfield's operator, this council, is responsible to its engine. Do not put any more strain on its parts, its overstressed residents. It's time for this council to run our government the way it was meant to be run. End the emergency here and now. Allow Enfield's engine to cool down and pray we can still restore the trust lost these past few years. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to come in front of the council for a second time? Okay, I declare public communications over. Okay, item eight, councilor communications. Councilor Mangini. Just a couple of comments. <clears throat> now that we have nice weather coming, thankfully, I would urge um, motorists to please be cautious of school buses and children. Many children are on scooters, many are on foot, many are on bicycles, and it's our responsibility as motorists to watch for them, not so much the other way around. I've seen many, many uh, vehicles um, speeding, taking advantage of the nice weather and the roads, but we need to be cautious of our children. And the second um, item, I just want to congratulate the um, Girl Scouts of America, um, Mayor uh, Bob Crisotti and I had the honor of attending the ceremony uh, last weekend, 110th anniversary, and it was a beautiful ceremony, and I just want to congratulate all the Girl Scouts out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to wish everybody a belated uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. And also thank everybody who wore green for Jaylene to honor the, uh, the tragic uh, life lost of an Enfield High student. So thank you all uh, for honoring her memory and please continue to do so. And I absolutely echo Councillor Mangini's plea, please, please drive safely, um, you know, lives are at risk. Thank you. Councillor Finger. Um, to add on to Councillor Mangini's and uh, Councillor Hopkins motorcycles. Motorcycles are everywhere. I ride one. Please watch out for me. Um, but that's important. You see a lot of people out there on motorcycles. A lot of our uh, veterans are on motorcycles, and there's a lot of groups around here on that. So please be careful also with them um, because you, people say we had a few deaths last year here in town from uh, motorcycle accidents, and I don't want to see that happen again. Um, and the last thing I got to say is we lost a good man. Um, in DPW this week, uh, Timothy Reak, um died of cancer and uh, is a friend for a long time, and we're, he's going to be sorely missed. And uh, you know, life's too short. Let's all be nice to each other. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Despard. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> First of all, uh, Pam, I just want to say thank you so much for what you do with Wreath, uh, Wreaths Across America. I know that's um, got to be a lot of work, and um, just want to say thanks. Um, and then I just wanted to plug um, the North Central Connecticut Chamber of Commerce is having a home show this weekend, uh, the 26th and 27th at the Enfield Mall. Um, should be a good time. It's not just uh, vendors. It's There's going to be raffles, prizes, uh, entertainment. It's really a family event, so hope to see a lot of folks there. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Deputy Mayor. Thanks. Um, really quickly, happy spring to everybody. Good luck to all those kids who are trying out for the spring sports, both in high school and uh, middle school. I know that that'll be happening this week and next week. Um, I missed last meeting, unplanned. I planned to be here, but sometimes when you plan everything out perfectly, other forces are at work and, and you miss it. So I was not here, so I do want to take this opportunity to formally welcome Ellen as our town manager, not interim anymore. Um, I have to say the biggest disappointment was not being able to be here and vote for you because I was really looking forward to that. So my official welcome and congratulations. Okay. All right, I have a, I have a few comments to make. Um, first of all, uh, to everybody that came and spoke tonight, thank you. Um, I know I did, I've had some conversations with Mr. Dion uh, regarding uh, your, your issues that you're having. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, the other thing that I, that I want to mention is the, the hard work that Pam uh, and uh, 
what you do, and, and Lori Gates uh, do for Wreaths Across America. You know, it's just a, a great, a great event, a great event. You know, I had the honor this year of welcoming in all of the truckers and uh, having spending some good time with them. But uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Uh, there's a couple other things I, I, I do want to mention. Yes, I did attend the Girl Scouts of uh, Connecticut uh, Mall Madness. Uh, it was a great event. Uh, special thanks to Gail Myers, who put that program together. She did a fantastic job. There's a couple other uh, things that I, that I want to mention. And one thing is that the, the pandemic has uh, impacted all of us. It's impacted our health, our safety, our finances, and, and really, probably the most destructive uh, to us is our emotional well-being. And I think that the, the town of Enfield and our social service uh, department uh, is making uh, great waves uh, in, in recognizing that. And I know that they're going to be convening a workshop with community partners to begin to understand the needs of our community. And uh, I know myself, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala are going to be part of this work group um, that is going to help decipher <coughs> mental health and substance substance abuse or misuse in our community and work towards uh, the steps of mapping out strategies and actions uh, and improving uh, our community's overall health. And uh, so I just wanted to give a, a shout out uh, to Cindy for, you know, putting this together with the social services. Um, I did have the, the pleasure uh, this past week um, with uh, our town manager. Uh, we met with uh, Ron Salas, who's doing uh, you know, some, some great work over on North Main Street and Main Street here, and he has a great vision for what uh, he's doing for the improvement of Thompsonville. Uh, it's, it's quite Im impressive uh, to, to look at his, his work, uh, what he's projecting to, to do in that particular area. So, you know, hats off to him and to everybody else that uh, are, are putting forth, you know, great effort and making some things happen here in town. Um, also, our police department should be recognized also for their fantastic work on uh, disbanding a drug factory here in town um, this past week. Um, there's one thing that, um, there's, there's, there's a couple of things, and one thing that, that we've been talking about is with our Water Pollution Control Board, um, that we've been talking about creating a standalone uh, Water Pollution Control Board. And I know that our water pollution control division is responsible for the operation and the maintenance and the repair of 16 pumping stations and our 10 million gallon per day wastewater treatment plant. And we have over 250 miles of sewer. So, you know, we have a, I think it's about time that we have a group of citizens along with our, our some council members to, uh, put their expertise in this area and to take helm on a regular basis to provide a, uh, uh, an oversight to, uh, to, to have a standalone uh, water pollution control. Um, you know, I'd like to hear, you know, from everybody, you know, <laughs> over the next few days and, you know, to entertain uh, a motion and get your, you know, your opinions on that uh, so that we can direct the town manager and our town attorney to start looking at the steps to start moving forward with this particular uh, avenue here. And I, th I think it would be in our best interest to do that. I think it's very difficult for us to, after a, you know, two and a half or three hours of a meeting, and then we're going to have a water pollution C C control commission that none of us really have that much expertise in doing it. So I think the, the time uh, is right for that, but, but once again, I do, you know, over the next few days, I'd like to have uh, everybody's input in regard to that. But I, I did want to, you know, bring that to everybody's attention tonight. Okay. So uh, that's all I have to say right now. And uh, I think we'll be ready. Anybody else have any other comments? Okay.
All right. Uh, next, we're going to have the town manager report, uh, and we'll be discussing the American Rescue Plan. And okay. All right. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are providing tonight a brief overview of the American Rescue Plan dollars that have been given to Enfield. We're going to do this in two parts. We're going to have the assistant town manager, Kasha Priscillo, begin, and then I'll take over halfway through. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so some of you may have seen pieces of this presentation before. Um, just as a general reminder, um, some eligible uses of funding of uh, the American Rescue Plan dollars um, include supporting public health expenditures, addressing negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, replacing lost public sector revenue, uh, providing premium pay for essential employees, which is what we did during the last council meeting, um, investing in water and sewer infrastructure, and investing in broadband, broadband infrastructure. So uh, in Enfield, we will be receiving a total of $12.9 million. Um, as of this past June 24th, 2021, we received 50% of that amount, so around $6.5 million. And then the re remainder of the funds should be received during this spring. Um, some new deadlines. Um, the report is actually due uh, April 30th, 2022, uh, the first report here. Um, we have until uh, 1231, 2024 to encumber, obligate the funds, and we have until the end of 2026 to spend the cash. Um, and since we presented last time, the final rule has been released. Uh, so the final rule actually goes into effect April 1st, so uh, next week. Um, expenses, any expenses allocated under the interim rule that was in power before are recognized. Eligible uses have not changed. And now there is a new provision where towns may spend up to $10 million of their allocation costs and have, um, and have a little more flexibility uh, how they report that spending. So a few things that we have already completed. Um, so in June of 2020, we opened the Enfield Express to offer drive-through services um, to our residents uh, to keep both our residents and our staff safe. Uh, so if you remember, we were uh, doing dog licenses, uh, tax services, um, finding leaf bags, really anything we could find uh, to do uh, contact less. We were doing that through the Enfield Express. Um, now the building is home to our tax and assessor office um, and also our Thompsonville Community Police Unit. Um, and that also includes um, the building itself and then the 1.7 uh, full acres uh, on the, where the building is located and behind it. Um, and that one of the benefits of that is that's right adjacent to our town hall parking um, and the Higgins Park behind town hall. So that purchase was actually completed already for a total of $725,000 using ARPA funds. Um, in addition, we also allocated $50,000 to the health department to do a testing site at the Enfield Annex uh, for both Enfield residents and town employees. Um, 185 tests were administered over eight days. Uh, the to a total of $26,000 approximately was spent, and the rest is actually um, coming back to the town. Um, and at our last council meeting, uh, we uh, this council passed premium pay for town employees. Um, so that was $812,000 for full and part-time employees uh, for work performed from March 1st, 2020, which was the beginning of the pandemic, um, until December 31st, 2021. And that impacted 375 full-time employees and 90 part-time employees. And about uh, that was about $50,000 in FICA Medicare. Um, and that was a total of $874,000 that was uh, spent during uh, the last council meeting. Um, so here's a summary of just a few things I just talked about. Uh, so $2.4 million spent, um, 12.9 was received. Uh, so what remains to be allocated is about $10.5 million that we have left to work with. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Ellen to talk about the future. You're gonna click, I can click or you can click up to you. you can click. So to continue the theme of items that were discussed by the town council last fall, uh, these have been appropriated, but they have not yet been spent. And the first one is the additional construction and design for the parking at Higgins Park, which is a $425,000 item. 
And then recently, we had uh, placed the order for the fitness stations as well as the band shell at Higgins Park, which would be expected for a midsummer delivery, and that is a $298,000 item. And then lastly, the bike path design from um, Franklin to the Suffield Bridge, that is a, a LATSIP grant. And so we are budgeted for and have done the design for that, which has come in uh, a little less than $100,000. So that's, again, in process from the previous council and last fall that have carried over and are now being appropriated this spring. The other items that were proposed last fall but have not had any type of financial action taken on them are the Brainerd Park restrooms, Powder Hollow restrooms to go along with the work that is being there, as well as proposed restrooms here in Higgins Park, as well as a redo of the town hall bathrooms and the water fountains throughout this building. So these were proposed for rehabilitating town-owned property. Uh, we did amend the top two, Brainerd Park and Powder Hollow, in order to also include field enhancements because Brainerd Park has just gone out to bid. There are some additional monies that are needed and there are some enhancements that are being requested for Powder Hollow. So we are going to um, probably increase that dollar amount there a little bit so that we can take into those as well, those into consideration. <clears throat> we also kept this slide in because we did have the failed referendum item on the public safety complex. The thought process from what I can tell is that there would be a, a bond authorization from the state and that ARPA dollars would be used for the local buy-in piece, which would eliminate any dollars coming out of the general fund budget. So for again, for consideration and just to kind of keep a running chronology about what's been happening, we included that slide as well. But again, as you all know, that did not get approved per um, public referendum last fall. The water line and sewer infrastructure piece is one that uh, a lot of communities are looking for. This is probably one of the least exciting divisions within municipal government, but I would argue that it's one of the most critical. And here in Enfield, you have quite a few projects that are coming up over the next few years. So the thought process was to put forward a water line and sewer infrastructure project line item from ARPA funds, which would fast track some of those. And as you can see from the sheet, we have some design costs and some uh, estimates, and we believe that over time, the 15 pump stations are gonna need to be upgraded. They range from $250,000 repairs to upwards of 4.5 million for the major one. So we are looking to think about doing some of that all at once that would um, help with the schedule, and it would also be a potential savings to the sewer users and the taxpayers over time if we were able to front load some of these dollars into that investment um, in one fell swoop. Now comes the fun part. Over the last few months, we've had lots of discussions here uh, in this room, but also within the departments. We've had suggestions from the community and we've had suggestions from some of our employees about where they think we could be using some of these dollars. And for those of you who remember the announcement a year ago when the ARPA funds were approved by Congress, these are meant for transformational change projects and also to mitigate any of the effects of the COVID pandemic. So at the top of the list is funds for supporting small businesses um, and or supporting small businesses through community gift cards, which was a proposal that was received. So that's why it's up there. Uh, this would need some parameters and some focus from the policymakers as to how you would like to approach that type of support. We know that the small businesses took uh, a lot of hits during these past two years. And so we think it would be appropriate to have some type of business plan in order to offer support to them, whatever those parameters end up being. Likewise, uh, another area that ARPA allows you to provide funding for is for qualifying nonprofits, those that might have provided services during COVID, those that may have been affected by um, reduced fundraising, uh, projects that couldn't get done, all of those types of things. That again would require some parameters from the policy leaders as to how you would like to approach offering some line item of support to qualifying nonprofits here in town. 
Another thing that you can do is there is a focus area for um, disadvantaged households. So we put that under funds for housing rehabilitation. Uh, there could be an incentive program. We could uh, do some type of matching grant. We could do outright support. Uh, the goal obviously is to rehabilitate housing stock to allow that everybody has the opportunity and the right to live in safe and sanitary housing. How do you accomplish that? Well, it could be in our high density neighborhoods where you could focus one type of program such as in Thompsonville to encourage the investor landlords to keep their properties up. It could encourage a home ownership program. It could move over to the historic districts, which we all know that those homes are very expensive to maintain. It should be something that there's something for everybody in all the neighborhoods of Enfield that could benefit from this. Uh, another project that's been talked about is the Enfield High School fields and the rehabilitation and the proposal to tweak those fields and move, move some of them around in order to optimize placement as well as add some security elements and take care of the water problems and potentially use that slope for, for bleachers. They have been putting money aside. We've been putting some money aside. This ARPA funds could actually put that project over the top and actually get it done um, and send it to referendum if, in fact, uh, that project was chosen. There is also workforce development and apprentice programs in order to improve the job situation. Uh, we could run apprentice programs. We could uh, target certain neighborhoods. We could target certain the hospitality industry, for example, in order to get people connected with jobs programs. So that's another eligible use as well. Uh, suggestion was respite programs for caregivers for those that have um, children who may be, or young adults that don't have the uh, plethora of social opportunities that others do once they've aged out of programs. So that is something that uh, we put on the list. And then obviously another project, the pool project for Higgins Park that also failed referendum. Uh, now without the St. Adalbert's piece being attached to it, uh, it may be worth a discussion amongst the policy members as to whether it's worth getting updated costs for that. With the closure of Lamagna Pool, I think it now has refocused people into thinking that that type of uh, activity is needed on this end of town, so it might be worth looking at again. We also have some ongoing projects at town-owned properties, including uh, fixing the parking situation at the Hazardville Institute so that there could be an end use at that building. So we have recently taken down the former public works building in the back, but there's some easement issues and some legal issues and some others that would need to be resolved in order to get that project to cross the finish line. Likewise, we have had discussions about the uh, obligations we have at 100 High Street as we prepare to turn that building over to the Opera House players. Uh, there's been discussions about additional fields and Lafayette Trail, that park that is also in Thompsonville, to create some type of passive recreation there. And there was a suggestion from, I believe, the teachers union about ARPA premium pay for education workers. So we put that on the list as well. Now, as we've been going through the budget process and getting that ready for, um, for the town council to review, we also pulled out some items for consideration that could actually help the general fund as well as us as we plan budgeting. So as you know, and we've talked about, the uh, final rule allows for $10 million that does not have to be attached specifically to COVID mitigation. Um, but it should be in some way connected to departments and other activities that had a COVID response. So as you know, we're behind with our replacement schedule on the police cars. So we did add that since they were first line responders that had a lot of um, action during the height of the COVID pandemic. So that would catch us up to where we needed to be with that purchase. Um, we also talked about as a, uh, enhancement of library services, which is very popular in town and is always at the top of the list when surveys are done, what it would cost to add Sunday hours next winter. And that's the number for a four hours being open at the main library branch for the months of January, February, and March, have people be able to get out and have another activity for them during the winter. The AV system at the senior center is uh, in a situation where it can no longer be fixed, so it needs to be repaired and replaced in certain parts. So we put that on as well because of the role that the senior center has played with reducing social isolationism, the fact that it is the site for all of our vaccination clinics, so that works there as well. 
and also to front load uh, some of the small repairs that did not get done at the annex in the pool and the gym the last time um, that there was rehabilitation there. This includes diving blocks, uh, a refinishing of the floor, and there might be, and a new scoreboard that the scoreboard, one of the scoreboards is uh, inoperable. Um, we put in the new ambulance, which uh, again would put us ahead of what that replacement schedule is. Uh, the citizen request, uh, the repair for basketball court at Wallop on Neelands Road, um, 120,000 for some uh, new IT equipment that we would need. And then we found some real value in uh, what we discussed last month about the scanning project that we took on uh, with the money that the town clerk had in her account that has now taken care of the building department. We need to do that in additional departments as well. So we thought that that would be a great one-time use as well. And then there's the discussion about additional splash pads, which we've had for several months. Uh, Below the referendum number, we can put in quite a few, or one big one, or anything at this point. But if we were to do that, I would just caution the town council that that me might need to be put up higher on the list, because if you would be interested in that, we should order those right away. And then lights and bathrooms that Mark Twain came in, uh, that's the site where all the pickleball players are. And so that was something that uh, the lights were discussed previously, and then bathrooms came on as a add on to that project for potential ARPA funding. Again, outside use, outside recreation, all fitting within the eligible uses. So if we were to do that, that is exactly uh, for the ones that had prices attached to it. For that slide, that still leaves us with about $8.5 million. So to go back to the uh, discussion about small business support, nonprofit support, or all of those other items that have yet to be priced out, now you kind of see where you are in terms of how to allocate funds for those categories that still do not have numbers attached to them. Can we just go back to the one that doesn't have numbers? <laughs> The one before that, I think. So these are the ideas, just to revisit quickly, they don't have numbers attached to them. So $8.5 million that remains, you could look at these or we could talk about you know, other items as we continue on as well. We can go back. To... So the next steps, uh, there is the available amount. We have some proposed items which would possibly take it down a couple of million, but that's still quite a bit of money that could be looked at in terms of what are those transformational projects, what are those impacts that had negative economic uh, business, nonprofits, neighborhoods, what do we want to ameliorate with these monies? So that's where we leave it in your hands as the policymakers to help us determine what those parameters are. Gina? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Scala. Were you all done? Thank you. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I did have a couple of questions and comments. Um, first, um, this is a great presentation. It's good to see sort of a bunch of different ideas and suggestions that have been brought forth. I would think, and uh, something of this magnitude, um, I think it deserves community input, um, resident input. So, because these funds are meant to enhance community and enhance our town, I would love to see some sort of community outreach survey, online question and answer, whether you have some hard copies in certain places like the town hall, the library, the senior center, um, and then online survey. I just think it would be a really good use People may have great ideas that we're not thinking of. We're only 11 people and, and department heads and, and town staff. So I would love to see some community input if we could do something like that. Um, in addition, I do have a couple of suggestions. Um, I loved the fact that the Mark Twain got on there for the bathrooms. There are soccer fields in the back of Mark Twain. I don't know if we can put those bathrooms somewhere so they can really be accessible by both the pickleball people and the soccer fields um, in the back. So obviously that's not an addition, it's just sort of placement. Um, and I know people are sick and tired of hearing me, I'm gonna die on like the bathroom hill. But 
parents and families love bathrooms when they're out with their kids. So um, if we could also add them to the Eli Whitney area. So at the library, there's a bunch of softball fields. And then the Rotary had built this beautiful um, play, play, playground. And unfortunately, I think all the kids tend to like run through the library and use one of their two or three little bathrooms. And I think... <laughs> It would be wonderful if we added bathrooms there to sort of help alleviate that traffic of running kids in and out of the bathrooms. So I think that would help both the um, playground area and I think there's three softball fields there. Um, another one would be if we could use find something to do with like adult daycare. Um, I know we recently disbanded that program. Um, I would love to see some of this money go to some sort of adult daycare program that would replace or try to replace some or all of what we used to have, um, or maybe do something better than we had. And um, another piece would be mental health services. Um, you know, there has been a big discussion surrounding mental health and the what has happened to a lot of our youth and really a lot of adults because of the pandemic. So I think trying to funnel some of this money into mental health services would be wonderful. I would love to see that happen as well. And let me see. I think my only other one was I would love to see, again, fields done right at Enfield High. It's huge pet peeve of mine. We have this beautiful building. I was on the building committee. I would love the fields to be as beautiful as that high school. So... That's it for me. Thanks. Okay. I, I have a few comments that I would like to make. First of all, thank you very much for the, the presentation. It was, uh, was, was excellent. Um, there's, a, there's a few things of, of mention in the, uh, at the public library, and, and this just came to my mind just now, that the Rotary years and years ago put a walking track and you, can, you don't even know that it's there it's a quarter mile track that goes around the the, the public library maybe we can uh, upgrade that walking track and to go along with that nice playscape and, so, and and the work that could be done over at Eli Whitney school but but there is a an actual track that people actually could go for a nice walk uh, right in, right in that area um, in regard to uh, the the board of ed and the town council, I, I really think that you know, with the the board of ed receiving their variety of uh, one-time funding sources through the coronavirus relief fund, and I'm going to suggest that that us and the board of ed meet to make sure that every dollar is being stretched correctly as far as possible. You know, from from their end. And from our end, and what their funds are going to be used for. Um, now, also uh, part of your presentation was uh, on a list for consideration, and I think it would be a a great idea um, that the town could issue pay premium pay for the teachers, paras, and cafeteria workers. Um, I, I'm going to actually make that you know make a recommendation that we support. Uh, these groups and, and really say thank you for going above and beyond uh, during the pandemic. Um, it falls under our guidelines to be able to do that for them. Um, I th know that we'll have to look at the language, we'll have to look at the criteria that would be allowed for the amount for these particular uh, groups. It doesn't have to be exactly the same that we had. Obviously, it's going to be a lot different. Um, but I just think that that we've always been a good partner. We've been very supportive of our education department, and I think it would be the right and appropriate action to take um, on our part to help uh, with the premium pay on, on their end. I don't know what they can do on their end, but but if we work together, uh, I think that's something that would be that would be beneficial. Uh, to the town. Uh, one other thing is, uh, you know, commercial facelifts in all different areas of town. I don't care if it's down at the Enfield uh, Square. I know a lot of uh, companies, not, not the square, but all of our strip malls. I know a lot of people have been doing a nice job with facelifts. 
facelifts in Thompsonville, facelifts in uh, Hazardville, give these businesses opportunities uh, to be able to apply um, for, you know, commercial facelifts in, in their buildings. And, and for business support, I, I, I like all of those uh, ideas. And um, I did have some discussion in regard to some upgrades of uh, what's going to be done at the fields, and, and you had mentioned that. Um, and I am ecstatic to hear that uh, they're going to be open to get this. If we're going to have these upgrades and it's a one-time shot to make our fields be quality fields where people are going to take pride and want to play on a particular field, whether it's a soccer field, a softball field, a baseball field, a football field, having pride in the middle school, have pride in their high school, this is the opportunity for us to be able to do, do this and do it correctly. Um, and I think the bathrooms are very important. Um, you know, not only do young families like to have them, but us older people love to have them. <laughs> but uh, uh, I know that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot to Councillor Despard and then Councillor Mangini. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when we passed uh, two weeks ago, when we passed um, the premium pay, I was under the assumption that the teachers would be getting compensated on the school side of things. Um, and I think that it's it's very important that no matter how that happened, that it happened because um, I believe that uh, you know teachers had it as hard, if not harder than most. And not only did they deal with the acute effects um, uh, of the pandemic, they're still dealing with the, the more long-term effects of the pandemic. Um, and so I just think, I think something needs to get done there. Um, and then the only other question I have was, um, I was expecting the Town Farm Road bike path design costs to be on this presentation. And I just don't, maybe that didn't make it on or, I just, um, that part of town, I think, really needs some, some recreation, and I think it's a perfect, uh, um, uh, a perfect use, and I don't think it's that much money, so I don't know if we could, you know, include that. That, that would be great. We, we did have conversations about it, and I think it could easily be added, but at this point, I'm going to rely on Kasha to help with the numbers because there's a lot of numbers being jumbled with this one. This was for the Town Farm Road multi-use path. The construction of the path is with a Connecticut DOT lot SIP grant. Um, the 80000 is for design. 80000 for design. Um, $847,000 for the construction, uh, which would have to be appropriated over two fiscal years because uh, it is over the referendum limit. So we just wanted to massage that a little bit and right. talk to finance and some other people just to see how that would look because that number is one that doesn't really fit because it is another referendum project that we would have to put. But right. it's, it's, in, it's in movement, so okay. to speak. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Mangini. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ellen, for putting this together. Very good PowerPoint. And by the way, I did find it. It finally found its way to me. Um, one uh, of the uh, proposed items for consideration is the respite program for caregivers. I know some of us up here, uh, Gina and Bob and me and Bill, did not <clears throat> support closing our Dell daycare under any circumstances. And I firmly believe to this day that that was wrong. So I'm happy to see that that type of a, a facility um, you know, will be considered, but to include adult members of our society that may have some social uh, needs or requirements. I think that's important too. So I'd like to see us maybe further explore this opportunity. And then the second um, item that I just wanted to bring forward, it was brought to my attention by the Veterans Council uh, Post 80 on Enfield Street has um, an issue of course, they have a, a water wet issue in the back, but lighting is very poor back there, and the parking is uh, very limited, very stressful, and inadequate. So I thought that would be something maybe we could explore as well. And, um, you know, our veterans do give an awful lot to our town. I think we owe it to our veterans to explore what it is perhaps the town can do to help out. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ludwig. Uh, you know, I'm glad you see the, I think that 
when it comes to the projects, I know you can, we can go in a million ways, but I think the next big allo allocation, in my opinion, should be the small businesses. And an uh, interesting idea about the credit card. Don't know how we really control it, but it's a great idea. So I think the other thing people need to understand, the other group that did the great job during the pandemic was the taxpayer. Yeah, we opened up the Enfield Express, which, again, some people agreed, disagreed, but the tax collection through the pandemic was almost 99%. That's why this town didn't go under, because taxpayers paid their taxes. I know you don't get no glamour about it, and I got all these projects are great, and I, all the ones we get to, that's great. But we really need the next major allocation, in my opinion, should be the small businesses that have struggled, whether it be there now is when they're seeing the pain with inflation, clearly you know, well over double digits, no matter what depends who you believe nationally. You know, you, now they're feeling the pain where the inflation now is affecting their customer. And a lot of those businesses... Even, I mean, I know the criteria is hard, we get small versus, but again, what about the, the supermarkets? Even Home Depot, when people would go to Home Depot, and that was open every, every day. These things mattered for the last 12, 24 months. And we, whether it's through, again, $1,000, I mean, I know there's, I saw some other towns. I just think we need to really do that next. And then if folks want to go to the community and find out what projects are most important, because really all these are important projects, and you could argue, but I think, if you look at the town and what we've been through, and really people forget we survived two hurricanes over the last two years as well. The water table was at a historic level for the last year and a half, and people who've never had water in their basement got water in their basement. In my opinion, the next two big allocations have to be for the taxpayer and for small business, and it includes respite care. I think it's a great idea as well for folks who took care of their family members. Remember, a lot of parents, too, who had to work from home also taught their kids. So, I mean, a lot of these parents took on multiple jobs. Yeah, when they were going through the pandemic. And so I'm all for helping the teachers, but again, the Board of Ed has a huge chunk of money that they can allocate to the teachers, that they can do as well. I think they have $13 million, I believe, maybe more. Is it? Um, they receive several pieces, but I don't believe that any of their eligible uses is for premium pay, which is why it's included on right. the town but side. I, before we get to that, we need to reward the taxpayers, in my opinion, small businesses, and any business for that matter. And, and folks who, again, kept this town going. We almost had a 99% tax, tax collection through a pandemic. Think about that. I know it's going to get no awards, no one, oh, it's just what you're supposed to do. But sometimes let's reward people for what, doing, what they're doing the right thing. And then the other, the, from it comes from a project perspective, those pump stations have to be done. <clears throat> you know, again, we're an old town where we live. Our sewer system got overrun by the prisons. That's why we had to build a $40 million water pollution control plant. Yo, know, the water in everyone's basement, if we have another historic rain season like we've had, those pump stations are old and they need to be, which helps flow that water. I mean, I, f I think the number last year during the, during the hurricane was 22 million gallons of water went through that water pollution. Think about that. If it didn't work, where was that water going to go? Thompsonville would have been flooded. I mean, as some communities around the country dealt with that because they didn't have a, a workable sewer system. So I understand it's not the most glamorous thing. But man, it is important. If we're gonna you know, move forward as a community, that's just my opinion. All the other projects, I mean, hey, they're all great. We can do them all great. But I think really we have to, we have to, we've taken care of our employees. It's time to take care of the taxpayer, who again, 98 to 99% tax collection. That means something where, why we're standing here today. That means something. And the Enfield Express did have an input in that because people could go and pay in the drive through which, again, was, you know, help people pay. And I can tell you, people still, as you know, complain about sending a, a bill to the sewer, to, for the sewer bill. Everyone wants to pay online or they want to pay in person in Enfield. That's just who we are. You know, I mean, it's maybe it's a bad habit of ours, but that's what we like to do. So I'm just, that's my suggestion. If it's through a credit card, through some sort of, uh, you know, for a business, you know, I'd like to just give the business the, the opportunity for what they want to spend the money on. Well, it's facade work whether it's for back payroll, whether it's, I mean, a lot of folks got PPE money, but a lot of them didn't either, you know? And so I, I, I guess as long as we follow the guidelines, I'm okay with saying, look, this is your money. I mean, let's be frank here. This was printed by the Fed and this is their money. We should be giving some of that back to them. And then all those other projects, I'd support everything you recommend because again, they're all important. So I don't want to nitpick between a project and any part of town because they're all important. I know I'd love to do them all. But for me, we have to reward the taxpayer and the small business and then prioritize the pump stations because if we don't, 
the pump stations are going to cause us more. I mean, we'll run out of we'll run out of this money if we have another issue, if we have another season where we had the historic rain that we had in the last 24, uh, 24 to forty eight months. So that's just my suggestion. I'm willing to be um, flexible on how we do it, but I think it's the most important thing we have to do, and we have to do it right away. That should be the next major allocation. I'm open to the amount of money, whether it be you know a million dollars, two million dollars, whatever it turns out to be. And I'm also flexible if it's a credit card. Um, I don't know. Again, I, I know tracking that maybe gets a little dicey. So, but is there a way we can do it in a way where we can track and again reward the taxpayers for doing their job? So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm really happy to see that a sizable proportion proportion of this uh, uh, total amount of money we receive from these uh, the AR ARPA. Um, is going to sewer infrastructure. I think it's a critical thing. I agree with many other folks here up on the council. Um, you know, we use this, every, every resident of the town uses this on a daily basis. And it is, you know, to the tune of 10, 20, 30 million dollars, these repairs. So I'm glad that we're getting ahead of that. And that I think will dovetail nicely into the kind of infrastructure support that the council is interested in doing, like uh, Water Pollution Control Board, to make sure we're uh, anticipating these huge costs. So. Thank you. Okay. All right. Just a, just a couple of other quick things. Okay. Um, we had a meeting with Eversource today to try to keep the conversation going about the parcels down by where the proposed train platform is going to go, as well as the Levitz property. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of um, entanglements there that we're trying to somehow uh, keep moving as far as the discussion piece because that's extremely valuable yet contaminated property that we're interested in and in being stewards of um, our finance director is in the audience but uh, it appears that our referendum limit for next year is going up significantly so for projects we'll now be looking at the number of eight hundred and twenty seven thousand as a referendum limit uh, next time we meet, uh, we're going to have a new list of the top 25 taxpayers, which I know is always of interest to both the policymakers as well as the public. So we will have that uh, as part of the handout. And the other piece, we did talk about um, health and wellness, the, the new coalition that's being proposed. Uh, Representative Arnone was in this afternoon. He has been a pivotal person with that whole function over the course of the last several years. And so he's going to be working with us as we transition into a new format. So I think that that's going to be really important as we bring both the Board of Ed side, that has been very integral in the health and mental wellness piece, um, and bring the city side into it and expand it to families seniors and everybody as opposed to the the previous focus which was just children that will consider to continue to be a priority especially after everything that's happened in the last two years but we're going to expand it so that there's actually going to be a lot more synergy in terms of if a child is affected a family is affected and if there are seniors affected that's affecting family as well if they have them so I think it's a really great model and I think that it will be something that as Enfield has really been the trailblazer on so many of these social initiatives over the course of the last several decades. This hopefully will be another one that will be a model for other communities. Okay, th thank you very much. Town Attorney Report, Attorney Talberg. Um, yeah, just real uh, quick, your, um, Mr. Mayor. There were two um, land use appeals filed recently, and I ordinarily wouldn't um, discuss this, but I just want to correct some, I think, misinformation that's out there. Um, both of the appeals arise from the approvals uh, concerning the uh, land use application at 35 Bacon Road. Um, the first one was an appeal filed uh, of the inland wetlands approval, and the second one that was just filed is of the approval approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Now, both of these are essentially lawsuits. Uh, one is against the, the wetlands agency, one is against the PZC. And I'm not on Facebook, but I guess there was something out on social media suggesting that the applicant, uh, that the applicant's counsel was representing the town in those actions. And I just want to dispel that rumor. That is not the case. The applicant in both of those actions has an interest because they have been issued a permit, a wetlands permit and a zoning permit. 
but um, the, t the land use commissions, the wetlands and PZC will be represented by the office of the town attorney. We filed our appearance on March uh, 14 for the wetlands agency and when the second action is returned, we'll file an appearance on behalf of the PZC. That is separate and apart. The applicant will have uh, the applicant's own counsel and uh, just wanted to make that clear for the record. And that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, report, uh, report of special committees. Anybody like to report any special committees? Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, myself and Councillor Finger met, um, I believe was that last week? Last week, time moves so quickly these days. Um, and uh, major points of discussion included um, usage of town fields. Uh, I want to encourage uh, those teams out there looking for exemptions to the rental uh, fees. Please submit your materials, get those in quick. We have, I think, four um, teams that have been approved, including the Black Bear, uh, Synergy Black Bears Baseball, Infield Little League, Infield Soccer Association, Infield Soccer Club. Uh, if you're having difficulty getting your materials in or if you have some question about that, uh, please reach out to the town manager's office. Uh, you can also reach out to me. I'm happy to, to be li the liaison there but um, you know we have a process that should move forward fairly quickly um, secondly something less glamorous uh, are solid waste ordinance updates so there are a lot of outstanding issues uh, like some of the public mentioned uh, during public comment um, you know we're trying to balance you know fairness uh, cost to the town and also practicability when thinking about how to tie up some of these loose ends on the solid waste ordinance you know things like whether uh, churches should pay uh, fees for the kind of uses they use for barrels, whether we should cap it for businesses, what counts as residential, what counts as business. These are thorny issues and we appreciate public comment. Um, there are additional uh, public uh, work subcommittee meetings that we're going to have to talk about some of these things. It's very important. It's not glamorous, but uh, we appreciate everybody's thoughts, ideas, and patience with it. Uh, I think the goal is to have really functional and also um, enduring public services. I, as I've said before, uh, Infield still has a municipal trash service and we really have to work hard to keep it that way. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to report uh, with Councillor Despar to myself and um, Social Service Director and Town Manager, we, we met, uh, the Social Services Subcommittee met and we awarded uh, our grants for the upcoming um, budget year. And I just want to say in the future that all these nonprofit groups, um, you know, I have to commend each and every one of them uh, with the uh, how specific they were in filling out their application for these grants. Uh, we have a rubric that we that we use and we go down and we review all of the applicants uh, and uh, everything that was done there's criteria that 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 is uh, used it deals with culture of diversity equity uh, inclusion stra strategies uh, funds and, and how they're going to be using uh, the monies uh, budget narratives that they give uh, so one thing, uh, you know, even like for next year, I know Kite usually comes before us. Kite came before us uh, two weeks ago. Um, we, I think we, as time goes on, we can invite each one of these groups as special guests uh, and f so that they can tell us what they're using these funds for. And plus, I think it would be uh, awesome to, to have uh, representatives from the, their groups to, to tell us a little more about their uh, uh, what, what they actually do. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with that meeting that we did have and, uh, and how smooth uh, it went. And like I said, all of the applications that were, that were uh, everybody should be commended. Each of these nonprofit groups should be commended for the fine job that they did in submitting their forms and submitting them on time. So, um, so we'll, we'll we'll move on. Any other special uh, reports? Okay. All right. Uh, number twelve, old business. Uh, this is the discussion resolution MOU with the fire districts for the collection and distribution of taxes. Uh, do I have a uh, motion to move this off the table? Motion. 
Uh, Councillor Santanella, second. Councillor Finger. Um, all right. The resolution to extend the memorandum of understanding by and between the town of Enfield and the fire districts of Enfield regarding the collection and distribution of taxes. Whereas the town of Enfield and the five fire districts executed the above reference memorandum of understanding, and whereas the term of the MOU commenced on July 1, 2018 and expired on June 30th, 2020, and whereas although the MOU expired on June 30th, 2020, the town of Enfield has continued to honor its terms and has continued to collect and distribute taxes for each of the five fire districts, and whereas the town council wishes to amend the MOU and extend its term through June 30th, 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council hereby authorizes the town manager to execute the attached amendment to the MOU extending its term through June 30th, 2023. So Councilor Mangini. Second. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Any discussion uh, in regard to this? Yes. Councillor uh, Santanella. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know this resolution has been on the table for uh, quite some time, and in fact, the town has uh, honored its commitment to continue to do this work um, on behalf of the fire districts. Um, I think it is important that as we take this off the table and agree to move forward, that this is um, a, a short-term uh, solution to what uh, is a, a longer term uh, issue that we need to uh, take up with the with the districts and uh, I think it's important that they uh, understand that this is uh, not going to be a continuous ongoing uh, relationship between the town uh, and the districts and that uh, past this term uh, we would be looking for them to be taking over um, this uh, this responsibility for a whole host of, of reasons so uh, that's all. Um, the only other comment that I wanted to make on these, and my, my preference, uh, and I don't know what other council members think about this, is uh, we currently have this memorandum signed uh, in conjunction with all five of the fire districts and the town manager. Um, it might make more sense that we do separate agreements with each of the districts going forward so that we have a separate agreement um, in hand as they are uh, five separate legal entities that uh, continue to have this relationship with the town. I don't know if that's legally possible or if that makes things just that much more complex, um, but I think I would prefer to see this done uh, directly with each of the districts and the commissions themselves. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Jim? Yeah, there's not yeah. much to add. I mean, I would just echo uh, Councillor Santanella's uh, 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 observation in that I've had similar conversations with the Fire District's Council about this being a show of good faith, that uh, the town has honored the MOU in the breach, um, but uh, we'd like to have it memorialized, whether it's with one district or all five, we want to have it in writing. And so I think with this Council's authorization, we can proceed to do that. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Can I just ask a clarification then? So let's take, for example, if, if Councillor Santanella's suggestion is to have five different resolutions, would that be possible tonight? Or I mean, I don't know how you would do an amendment off the floor on that. I mean, I, I'm not against it. I just, I don't know procedurally how you would do something like that? Yeah, uh, this, this resolution authorizes the town manager to execute the attached amendment. So, I mean, I guess we could do it five separate times. I'm not sure that is what you're looking for. Was that, um, or did I, maybe I misunderstood? You know, um, if we're gonna complicate matters, we can, we've done it this way in the past, let's just leave it at that for now. This would get us to but, June 30, 2023. Moving. Yeah, I mean, moving. I mean, moving forward. Ideally, we will uh, restructure a number of different relationships, and we can address that then. If that, I, I don't know what other people think about that. To be clear, we'll proceed with this as is with the five, and then revisit it going forward. Correct. Okay. Very well. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Ludwig. Just curious, you know, to your comments that this will be the sort of last extension. How much leeway does the fire districts need? I mean, do they have it now? That's their leeway. So if they 
if they come back next year at this time saying, look, we we haven't we can't we can't find someone to do our bills, do we actually have to? So we have to actually pass another memorandum, correct? Or is there should we put in a like a little amendment saying we will let them know that you know that's it? You know, the, we're standing by the resolution of December of next year, or which gives them six months to get somebody. Uh I think the, the goal with the conversations that have occurred with Councilor Santanella and myself and the Fire Chiefs Association is that we're looking to encourage further consolidation discussions. Agre and, and if that's happening in good faith, then I think the town council next winter has another conversation about that. They probably need at least for a first time startup, I would say that we would have to notice them preferably in February. So I was actually even thinking think in December. I mean, should that be part of the resolution? Say we will send a notice. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think that because we've lived we li this in the past where they've come back and said we don't have enough time, so we've ex and that's why we've extended it out of good faith. So I'm just saying, yeah. yeah. yeah but I mean, but will we. I'm just saying, well, if we they come back and we a year from now at this time, they haven't gone out and they're not having someone to collect. What are we going to do? That's so. I, I, if you want to answer that question, that's fine. Yeah. Council of I, I, I would hope that tonight's conversation might give enough heads up notice that 18 months from now there's going to be this need. And I, I think to re continue to reiterate that, um, we will certainly do that in our in our meetings with uh, the commissioners that are speaking with us and with the fire chiefs. Um, this is this is the notice. And we we really just um, you're right. Nobody wants to leave people without a source right. of funding. Right. That is completely uh, mean spirited and not the the uh, intention here. Okay. Um, so I, I completely agree with you, but I think that the notice is is the resolution right, right. now, yes. um, and I yep. think that that should be sufficient. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sheila. Roll call. Councilor Santanella. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati? Four. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Four. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Pisner? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, new business uh, under A, B, C, and D, there are none. Uh, 14 items for discussion. A, there is none. B, town council appointed. We do have a few appointments tonight. Uh, the first one is the Blight Review Committee. The term of office of Jessica Meyer Martin expires on 3-31-2022. Reappointment would be until 3-31-2024. Do I have a nomination? Uh, Councilor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I nominate Jessica Martin to this position on the, the Blight Review Committee. For, for those folks who are following the committees, Jessica was appointed um, previously and is, is uh, finishing out this term here. Uh, she's done a very a very thorough job uh, for the couple requests that have come through already. And I think she'll continue to do a great job. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Councilor Pisner, thank you. Do Are there any other nominations? Motion to close nominations. Okay. Second. Uh, second, Deputy Mayor. First of all, uh, oh, Counsel Councilor Finger, you're very quick tonight. Thank you. And <laughs> Deputy Mayor um, Sakala, the second. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Abs uh, abstentions? Uh, I believe that what? Nine, nine in favor. Okay, nine in favor. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Santanella? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Jessica Martin? Mayor Casati? Four. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Jessica Martin? Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Jessica Martin? Councilor Pisner? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, next, the Prison Town Liaison Committee. The term of office of Nelson Rodriguez expires on February 28, 2022. Reappointment or replacement would be until 12-31-2024. Do I have a nomination? Yes. Councilor Mangini. I'd like to uh, reappoint Nelson Rodriguez. And a second. Second. Uh, Councilor Despard. Uh, are there any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? 
Motion to close. Coun Councilor Finger, a second. Uh, Councilor Mangini. All in favor? Okay, that's uh, nine in favor. All uh, right, Sheila, a roll call, please. Councilor Santanella. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Nelson Rodriguez. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Nelson Rodriguez. Councilor Pisner. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay. The Patriot Award Committee, the term of office of Michael Emmons, expires 7 31, 2021. Reappointment or replacement, replacement would be until 7 31, 2023. Do I have a nomination? Yes. Uh, Councilor Despard? I would like to uh, nominate Michael Emmons for reappointment. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Councilor Mangini, are there any other nominations? Uh, do I have a motion to close motion. nominations? Deputy Mayor Sakala? Second. Second. Councilor Mangini. All in favor? Okay. There are eight in favor. Um, Sheila, roll call. Councilor Santanella? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Mike Emmons? Mayor Crisati? Four. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Mike Emmons? Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Mike Lemons. Councilor Pisner? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Patriot Award Committee, the term of office of Scout, Scott Copen expires 731-2021. Reappointment or replacement would be until 731-2023. Do I have a nomination? Councilor Mangini? Yes, I'd like to reappoint um, Scott Copen. Uh, second? Second. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, do I have a, <clears throat> are there any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close the nominations? Close. Councilor Mangini, second. Councilor Pisner, uh, all in favor? Okay, very good. Uh, nine in favor. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Santanella. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Scott Copen. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Councilor Finger. Scott Copeland. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Scott Copeland. Councilor Pisner. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay. C, town manager appointed, council approved. There are none. Uh, D, P and Z, commission appointed, council approved. There are none. We will move to item E, discussion resolution. The resolution to increase the Board of Education appropriation for fiscal year 2022 due to increase in the education cost sharing grant of $637,731. The resolution reads, whereas on April 19th, 2021, the town of Enfield budget adopted a total school appropriation of $72,109,522. And whereas the adopted budget as amended included estimates of educational funding from the state of Connecticut for the education cost sharing of $29,185,914 under the following account. And whereas the adopted budget of the state of Connecticut increased Funding for the education cost sharing grant by $637,731. And whereas the town of Enfield will receive a net increase of $637,731 in educational funding from the state of Connecticut. And whereas the town of Enfield desires to increase the appropriation to the town of Enfield Board of Ed by the amount of $637,731, which is the net increase in educational funding from the state of Connecticut. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Town Council of the Town of Enfield hereby approves the $637,731 increase to the total school appropriation to $72,747,253. Be it therefore resolved that the Town of Enfield adopted budget for educational cost sharing under the account uh, given will be increased by $637,731. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second. Second. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Uh, are there any 
discussions or questions in regard to this? Uh, Councilor Santanella. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I, I really need to understand where $637,000 is going to fit into the existing budget. So, and I just want to make sure I understand this. We, the total appropriation was $72 million. And in that budget, there was an already an estimated uh, educational cost sharing of $29 million. So it was already factored into the total budget. Is I'm asking uh, through the marriage of the town manager. Um, we Correct. do have the finance director here who might be able to touch on some of the nuances, but I asked the same questions when I saw this, and it was communicated to me that this was because at the time of the ECS funding, as it comes through, sometimes there's variations in the final amount, and that the town council at some point had decided to not forward the entire amount until it was received. So this is the last piece that was just received, so it is now heading to the Board of Education. We are obligated by law to give them this money. Um, my concern is that this is very late in the fiscal year for them to actually spend this amount, and I would recommend to the town council that you suspend this practice and just give them their ECS formula funding when it comes through from the, the amount comes through. Okay, so it, it still begs the question: what, what, where is six hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars going to be spent between now and the end of the fiscal year? Well, I won't speak for the superintendent, but I believe he is wondering how he's going to do that himself. And knowing that we also have state law that now allows them to hold over, is it 1%, 1 2% 2 of their budget for surplus, I would assume that at least a piece of this is probably going to land there. Okay. So I would feel much better knowing that this is going to surplus and then will be part of the next budget process. Um, and, and I understand by statute, we have to give them this money, but I... You see this kind of disbursement this late in the year, and you understand my concern that uh, it's not going to become part of surplus, and you know we have no visibility of what this is going to be spent on. So, I think the larger issue is that not many communities do it this way. It's right. usually and, just appropriated at the time. And, and I could not agree with you more that in that next budget cycle we will kind of change the practice. However, it doesn't alleviate it. My concern about the where this money is going to go and how it's going to roll into the next budget process is a little bit, uh, I'm comforted a little bit knowing that it'll be in surplus and not spent immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, roll call. Councillor Santanella. Four. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwick. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. F. Discussion resolution. Resolution adopting revised social worker job description. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the re revised job description for social work. Date submitted March 11, 2022, submitted by Steve Belinda, Human Resources Director. Um, Steve or Cindy, any comment, questions? We have any? Okay. Thank you. I called on you because you were in attendance. <laughs> Uh, uh, good, good evening, uh, Steve Blender, Director of Human Resources, along with my colleague um, Cindy Greary, Director of uh, Health and Social uh, Social Services. Um, Cindy came, came to me a few weeks ago because uh, she wanted to make uh, proposals to the one of the job descriptions for the social worker position, uh, and this was based on the global uh, reorg in your department. And do you want to elaborate further on some of the nuances of the job description? Sure. So this is really the last piece of the restructuring and reorganization. Um, it, it brings us more in line with the focus of the Department of Social Services is really around triage assessment and connecting people to services. It's not around clinical treatment. We have a lot of community partners that do that piece of the work. And so the job description had morphed into more of a very clinical role. 
So this brings it back to we do a lot of case managing and, like I said, connecting people to the right services. So this will bring us along there with our new care coordination team that's comprised of different professionals that do this case managing work. This specific role is really going to be the last one we need to um, fill, and it focuses on our youth. Okay, thank you. Many, many times when a position is vacant, we like to reassess that uh, situation. That um, position to see if there's anything we can do to enhance it uh, when there's no employee in that, that that way we don't get any opposition but uh, in this case it was vacant so we uh, made the changes I spoke to the union president Allison Aragini she has no issue with it it's gonna still be in the union um, so it's just a matter of just uh, adopting this and moving forward and filling it okay thank you any questions from anyone okay Sheila roll call Councillor Santanella four Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. G. Resolution to adopt wage adjustment for the assistant town manager position as a result of the merger with the HR director position. <clears throat> Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter of the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the wage adjustment of the following position. The position is the Assistant Town Manager, effective March 31st, 2022, proposed salary $153,454, date submitted March 16th, 2022, submitted by Ellen Zappu Sasu. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second. Uh, second by Deputy Mayor Sakala. Discussion or questions from anyone? Um, yes. I don't know if somebody, Ellen, maybe you can just sort of give an overview, a, a, sort of an explanation of why this is an increase in what we're doing, just for sort of the general public's knowledge. Sure. So as all of you know, we are losing our assistant town manager, Kasia Porciello, to Manchester, effective at the end of the month. So... As uh, our HR director previously just stated with the social work position, whenever positions become vacant, it's always a good opportunity to look at best practices as well as are there any efficiencies and, and what needs to be done. In this case, this is a very specific case that as a new town manager with 90 days on the job in the middle of budget, as well as ARPA, as well as everything else that happens over the course of the day, um, this position, if we went out and did a a search. It could probably be between 60 and 90 days before we even started interviews and or we're at the point where we were going to make an offer. So that is an untenable situation right now for Enfield at this point. And actually, I was here for three weeks while Kasha was finishing her uh, maternity leave. And the difference from productivity from when she returned and what we were able to accomplish with having two people in the office, being able to work together, partner on projects, as well as have that learning curve with um, her knowing what was happening in town and giving that background and institutional knowledge really increased our output. So I can't afford to go back to that situation. So in looking at other forms of government and what other town manager forms are, and, and ironically, the position that she's going to in Manchester is one like this, where there is a concentration of HR slash personnel duties associated to the town manager's office in one of the assistant positions. So that is somewhat the model that will be the prototype for this. Uh, the cost savings also are great. I also believe that due to the strong relationship that the town has with its labor unions, there is capacity for Mr. Belinda to actually take on these additional duties because his day is not really absorbed with a lot of grievances and high-end labor issues. And when they are, obviously that will continue to be the priority for the town in order to resolve those. So having the bandwidth, having the knowledge, having been here and been a very close associate of the former town manager and, and previous to that even, I think that that is the situation that we find ourselves in that will most easily rectify what is going to be a very big gap 
uh, on her last day. I am officially not talking to her, but I will say at this point that um, she's been a great asset just in the short time I've been here. And I'm sure that the town council will echo that sentiment that she has been a very productive and uh, intuitive member of the staff and is going to be really missed. So Steve has some very big stiletto shoes to fit into uh, <laughs> if the town council were to move in this direction. Thank you. Sheila, roll call. Oh, oh excuse me, Councilor Ludwig. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not against the move. Just curious, though. So will the job description include doing HR and assistant town manager? Because, I mean, I'm just, are we worried about salary creep as we moved up? Is it, again, as we've gotten with other departments over the years where now his salary is in, in range with your salary that, you know, I'm just saying, will the description show that, he, that the individual is doing two jobs? So if by chance that the individual doesn't want to do two jobs, that this will be able to adjust the salary? I think that's always the purview of the town council to do that. So this is going to be him maintaining his salary and receiving a stipend from the okay. town manager's office to bring it to that level that but, is shown. All right. But my only concern is where the resolution is written. It shows that's the new effective salary. So, yeah. all right. Well, it's not, I just think it's a little too, a little too, um, which was tightened up a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just yeah. very briefly, I, I, I'm a little leery of consolidating two very important positions. I'm glad that we have that review after three months to make sure that will work. I know other towns do it, but it just makes me a little cautious. Um, so hopefully this works well, and I know it's very important that we, we are able to, to have a full uh, full crew of people as we go into budget. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Finger. Um, I think I see where Councillor Levick is coming from, because it does say salary for the new position it doesn't say anything about a stipend that you just mentioned i think that is what you were talking about right Mike. Yeah, i was just making clarity yeah i mean so i mean does there need to be an amendment made to say that the extra money is going to be a stipend at this point instead of a salary is that something that we need to look, to do i think i sure. use the term stipend so that it's clear that there's two sources for that salary but it is in essence a salary it's not okay, really, yeah. it's not being paid separately or you know as a separate line item on a salary piece but there's funding coming from his existing position within the HR budget and then we will re no is it yours or is it mine <laughs> i forget where we're reducing no but where are we reducing the budget your department or town manager uh, that'd be my, my position. okay so okay, that, that's I'm where sorry. the cost savings so the question i really have and you know and i'm all for for C for doing this but you know, I have to do my job. You know, appears I have to. Is that um, stipends are we have that in our, in our in our contract? Stipends are not regulated to go towards the pensions and things like that. Salaries are. Mm. That's straight cost. Steve's under a under the town pension, I'm assuming. So, is it going to be a stipend or is it going to be a salary? Because that makes a difference for if it's going to a pension or not going to his pension. It's salary, right? All right. Thank you. Question. Councilor, yeah, hold on. Councilor Mangini, oh, okay. then. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. I do want to thank Steve for stepping up to the plate. I know for a fact that Steve has been pitch hitting and has been doing a superb job to assist without asking or looking for anything. So I want to share that information with the public that. All in all, this is a good fit. He is our HR guy. He's done a phenomenal job with relations, with employees, with managers, with the town, with the public. And I see this being a very good fit. And we are going to benefit immensely from this. So thank you again, Steve. Councilor Pisner. OK, and again, I, I think it's a great fit. But after three months, I mean, because I kind of feel like Councillor Hopkins, that we're taking two important positions and melting them into one. And it may work, and that's great. But if it doesn't work, and he goes back to being HR, what will his salary be? And what will the salary be moving forward? I mean, because again, there's not a definition here of two positions equaling the 153. 
So that's what I'm saying. So we're all at will employees. So it would be action of the town council, whatever you chose to do at that point, if at the 90 day period, either I or Mr. Belinda chose that this was not something that we wanted to move forward with, everything would revert, but you could also enforce that through a resolution here at town council. Yeah, so I'm not against the move at all. I just, it's just the way the resolution was written. Again, usually we, we show where money's coming from and where it's going into because now technically he's in two different budgets. So, I mean, those are the things I think we need to make sure that are clear on these things because that exactly, I mean, if that situation arises, we don't have a paper trail what, where the money's coming out of in the budget as we start the budget. And that's just my only point is that this should be clear where the money's coming from and where it's going into, and that should be in the resolution. And historically, we've done it that way. You're welcome. So if you, um, that's all. I'm not questioning the move. I'm just questioning where the resolution's written. Good evening. Um, when I was working on this with uh, uh, the town manager's office, there is no need to move any money because the town manager's office has an adequate amount of money in that um, department already. Based on the vacancy throughout, throughout the year um, with the former town manager, there was no need to move any money. And we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. That's why the rest of the duration of the fiscal year is adequate. I understand, but now we're creating a, a, a job description with a salary of 100. That's all I'm saying. You the, sure? the job descriptions are also right, adequate. We're listing a new salary at a, that didn't was wasn't there prior. That's all I'm saying. Oh, true. That's right. the purpose of this was just to under the town charter, the uh, council has to approve the salary of each employee. And that's all we kept it to because we didn't need to change the job description. We needed we didn't need to change or transfer any money. So if we didn't need to do those things, we kept it as simple as possible, which is just adopting the wage adjustment. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Santanella. Um, just just one comment, Kasha. I came to your office when I found out you were leaving and only worked with you for a short period of time. And I don't want this conversation to get, uh, to overshadow the fact that we are losing uh, an incredibly talented uh, member of our town staff. And it's always really hard as a business person and a manager to see good people go. And I think it's a real loss for Enfield. Um, but I understand the reasons why you're leaving. And, you know, you can't, um, you have to respect people for the tough decisions that they make and how they manage their careers. And uh, it is, uh, you know, you're doing what's right for you. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's really hard that uh, we see somebody like you uh, going somewhere else. But um, I just want to wish you well in your new endeavor. Thank you, Councillor Santanella. Um, Steve, thank you for your, your explanation. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, I think we almost forgot about the uh, the roll call vote. But before the roll call vote, um, you know, once once again, uh, Kasha, during your time here in Enfield, uh, er everything that you have done has been very professional. Uh, you're, you're a hard worker. You're a young, young mom. Uh, you know, so best of luck to you in your your new uh, venture in the town of Manchester. I know you'll do very well. We will miss you here. And uh, I was going to save that till the end, but I might as well just, I have to get it off, <laughs> off of me now. And, uh, but, you know, thank you uh, for your commitment to the town of Enfield during your time here. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your kind words. It's really been an honor the past few years, and I, I am going to miss all of you and the town and all the employees here very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sheila, roll call. Okay, Councillor Finger. Um, do we make a motion to accept this or no? No? Okay. No, we're doing a roll call now. Roll call, please. Councillor Santanella. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. H. Discussion resolution uh, resolution regarding the discontinuance of a portion of Old Delange Road. 
whereas the town of Enfield has received a request from the owners of 74 Town Farm Road, Joseph C. and Jacqueline C. Bosco, to discontinue pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 13A-49, a portion of Old Neilands Road, and whereas Mr. and Mrs. Bosco own the property on both sides of the portion of Old Neilands Road to be discontinued, and whereas the area of Old Neilands Road to be discontinued is shown on the attached map, and whereas the council referred this proposed discontinuance to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance within the requirements of the Connecticut General Statute 8-24, and whereas the Planning and Zoning Commission at its meeting on March 10th, 2022, voted unanimously to send a positive referral to the Town Council. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Enfield Town Council hereby approves the discontinuance of the portion of Old Neilands Road, as shown on the attached mat, prepared by the Town Attorney's Office, date prepared March 16th, 2022. Councilor Mangini. Second. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Uh, any discussion? Okay, Sheila, roll call. Councilor Santanella. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Mayor Crisati? Four. Councillor Despard? Four. Councillor Finger? Four. Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Pisner? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. I discussion resolution, the resolution to repeal the Town Council Resolution Number 4095 to withdraw from the memorandum of understanding by and between the town of Enfield and the fire district of Enfield regarding tax assessment agreements. Whereas on April 3rd, 2017, the town council adopted resolution number 4095 regarding the policy and procedure for communicating to the fire districts when a tax assessment agreement is under consideration. And whereas the above noted resolution further authorized the town manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the fire districts. And whereas on April 20th, 2017, the Enfield town manager and the chiefs of the five fire districts executed a memorandum of understanding by and between the town of Enfield and the fire districts of Enfield regarding tax assessment agreements. And whereas the town council wishes to repeal Town Council Resolution Number 4095 and further wishes to withdraw from the MOU. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Enfield Town Council hereby repeals Town Council Resolution Number 4095 effective immediately and be it further resolved that the Town of Enfield hereby withdraws from the MOU effective immediately and be it resolved the Town Manager is authorized to send to each of the fire districts a written notice of the town's withdrawal from the MOU. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Uh, any questions or discussion regarding this? No? Okay. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Santanella. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard? Four. Councillor Finger? Four. Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Pisner? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All right, we're going to move to public communications. Uh, any person to uh, wishing to speak in front of the council? Anyone? Going once, going twice. Public communications are closed. Councillor communications? Councillor Finger? Yeah, through you to the town attorney. I got a couple of questions, but we didn't have a chance to when you gave your report. Was these um, actions, lawsuits against the planning and zoning and wetlands happen after the approvals of both parties? Yeah, that's how it works. The approval happens, and then within, I think, 15 days, the uh, abutters or other uh, persons who are not happy with the approval can go to court to try to have it reversed. So really, at any time, he can start that building, and even though the lawsuits are going on, he can start these buildings if he wanted to, or this building, excuse me? Uh, that's generally how it works. The applicant, once they have the permit, they can take their risk if they feel comfortable that they're going to prevail in any appeal. 
I'm not sure what other impediments there might be, but the fact that there is a zoning appeal or a wetlands appeal in Superior Court would not preclude uh, further process, progress on the project. All right. I would just think that maybe he would, you know, consider just holding off to everything was done. That's all. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Scala. I was going to save mine for the end. So, Kasha, good luck. Uh, we will miss you, and um, I'm sure you will be very successful in your new role. So come back and visit us every once in a while, even though Ellen's not talking to you. <laughs> yep. Councilor Santanella. Sorry, this was on my list earlier. Um, we had this note here. Um, I, I was to fo My note to, was to follow up on the traffic light outside of Enfield High School. Um, this is... Uh, are we going to go over this, or you just left it for us for our own information? I, I can take it and read it. That's fine. I just have not had a chance to go through this. Well, it's it's probably I'll acknowledge for the viewing public that at the last meeting we had uh, the former Board of Ed Chairman question the status of the light uh, that he believed was approved for Enfield Street. Um, the research indicates that there is a quite robust discussion about it, um, but at this point it is not recommended that a light go in based on the traffic study review that I supplied to members of the town council and the input from the people who have uh, weighed in on that. So at this point, uh, we, won't, we won't be pursuing that through the State Traffic Commission. Okay. Councilor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just very briefly, um, I know that it was kind of implied earlier, but through the mayor to the town manager, uh, I would make a request for a resolution to change the way that the cost sharing grant money is dispersed going forward. It seems you know, really inefficient. I don't see a downside to changing it. Um, I don't really see an upside to how it was done originally, so I would make that request, and hopefully other folks would support that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopkins. Any other comments? Councillor Ludwig. Again, through the mayor and town manager, I know you answered the question, but it, still at some point, I mean, the human trafficking, I know Chief, you know, Rigget didn't, doesn't feel she can give the presentation, but I still think it's such a huge issue that I'd love to see us be a leader on, you know, and uh, and I know you're looking into it, but if we could at some point have a six to seven mm -hmm. on how, so people recognize and how just tragic it is. And it does happen in, in Enfield and it does happen in the surrounding area. And so, so just wanted to throw that back out. You don't, I mean, if you don't have an answer now, that's fine. We do have a semi-answer. So Chief Riggett has been exploring um, professional opportunities because she doesn't want to be the one to speak right, on it. Yeah. She's going to facilitate it. But the three or two or three that she has been trained by, they are not uh, releasing their PowerPoint. So she is now in conjunction, I think, with the police department trying to find someone to come and awesome. speak to the issue outside of those professional development circles that she's been engaged Perfect. in. So it's more of a appropriate overview for the general public. Yeah, that's great. I think it's very important. And you know, just we've unfortunately had a run of Narcan, you know, saves or administrations. And yeah, people don't realize that our staff, meaning the police, the firemen and the EMS and others, and I know the social workers involved as well, they do more saving lives than they do putting lives in, gen in general. And I think you know, it's it's hard when someone's in that situation, but you've, we've luck, we've luckily seen a few people actually go and take care. When you talk about mental health and a lot of things, you know what? Those folks with the courage after that situation to actually go to the hospital and get care, I mean, there's a start, and mm -hmm. hope hope can't be a bad thing. So, I mean, it's those are things that are going on every single day. And the amount of Narcan saves have been scary, and I think people need to understand that. And you know we're doing that every single day, and I think it's that's part of this. So it's sort of the theme that, unfortunately, it is happening here, mm -hmm. and we do a pretty good job of trying to address it. Yep. So thank you. Anybody else before we call it a night? Motion to motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Second, Councillor Mangini, Councillor Hopkins. Good night, everyone, and have a good weekend. Thank you.